Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Jibala. I'm a medical student in part 5. If you've not subscribed to my YouTube channel, I mean, what are you waiting for? Click on the subscribe button right now and join the family, join the gang. And if you're a returning subscriber, you know how we do it. It's always love over here. And today, I decided to do something very, very special. Something I've never done on this channel before. And I don't even want to be stingy, guys. That's why I'm putting this out here for all of us. So, what's a better way to learn aside asking people that have already done it before you? I mean, you have to ask them so that you don't make the mistakes that they made. So that was the reason why I decided to ask my senior colleagues, the people in the final year now, how they got a distinction in their O and G examination. Distinction simply means an A, they got A in that particular course, that's obstetric and gynecology. So I decided to ask them tips and tricks on how to pass the exam without any further ado let's get right into this video my name is Tomi Singh I'm a 600 level medical student of the University of Medical Sciences Undo I had distinction in my last professional Obstetrics and Gynecology exam. I'm Akinduru Priz and I'm a student of University of Medical Sciences, Ondo. I had the distinction in O and G. My name is Kuboya Laolo. I'm a final year medical student of University of Medical Sciences, Ondo State. In the last O and G exam, I got a distinction. My name is Godzui Ramosedi. I'm a Final year medical student, University of Medical Sciences, Ondo, and by grace of God, I had a distinction in one G exam. One thing I basically did was to study, you know, like they see the common things occur commonly. So I knew those things perfectly well. I mean, management, obstetric emergencies, gynecological emergencies. So most things that were discussed during clinical sessions, yes, I knew most of them and then I familiarized myself with um, past questions from my school and other schools. So I got some past questions from other schools. Even all these OSCE picture tests, so yeah, I familiarized myself with them and so most of them. I think that was basically what I did. One thing that comes to mind right now is that I was able to revise with someone who helped me a lot that period the revision helped me a lot that's what i can say discipline hard work you know all those things i know it sounds corny but that's the truth because there are some days there are some nights that you just don't feel like studying but you just have to you know those those, those are the days those, those kind of days are the ones that that kind of help because when you push through, you know. So for this question, I'll tell you there are several factors. The first of which is obviously God. It was by God's help that it happened. And secondly, a very important factor is asking questions and asking the right questions. So asking questions here implies asking your senior colleagues how the posting was for them and asking them how best to approach it. So I. Before I started posting, I tried my best to ask some of my senior colleagues how the posting was, some of the peculiarities of the posting, what's expected of me during the posting, how the exam was for them, and how they prepared for the exam, and also some of the lessons they learned in the exam itself, and how I can avoid some mistakes that were made during the exams. So, generally, asking questions about the posting from your seniors will give you an idea of what to expect and how best to prepare for posting itself and also they will give you tips like what materials to use, what lecturer preferences are and what um, tips to use in preparing for exams and you know the exam spans across both essay, MCQs, tipo chase, viva and picture tests and all of that and OSCE and long cases. So all these parts of the examination in order to get a good idea of what to was expected of you. You need to ask questions from your senior colleagues to know how it was for them. You know to know how, how to prepare best for those um, parts of the exams. So another thing is asking questions and then the next thing is practicing past questions. So you also get past questions from them and practice those questions. 
because most times some questions are repeated and it won't be a good thing to have questions that are available to you and you don't practice those questions and then they get repeated and then you don't have any idea so it's always good to practice ask questions as well and also during the posting try to ask your lecturers ask your colleagues questions when their things are not clear try to also ask questions so generally asking questions is one very important factor and then another thing i would say that helped was coming around for postings and this is very it seems very simple but it's very crucial as well not just coming around but paying very close attention to most times during postings lecturers consultants will emphasize certain things during postings that they expect students to know and it's those questions that end up coming in the exams you are taught a lot of things during classes you are taught a lot of things during the clinic during what round a lot of stuff is moved but there are certain stuff that is more important than some other stuff and it is during those times you come around that you know what is actually more important and there are certain cases are also more common than other cases and it is when you come around you know those cases so coming around is very very important it helps you to know what the lecturers want it helps you to know what the lecturers how the lecturers want you to say what they want you to say because some lecturers have certain preferences so when you meet them in clinical exams there's a way they expect you to answer a question that is different from for instance one consultant might have a particular way he expects you to present your case and he, another consultant might have a different way altogether so coming around they help you to know what this one was and what this one wants and that really creates a picture in your mind so that when you encounter any of them during exams you know exactly what to do so coming around is very vital to know the preference of examiners the type of questions they can ask you the common cases are call and knowing exactly what to focus on when you are reading so that, that's what i'll say gives an edge during preparation for exams um not really because we did ong and pediatrics so i applied the same method to studying both of them and it was basically revising with my friends not really but i did enjoy reading ong like i don't know i think that's about my best posting in medical school so far i really did enjoy reading ong because the textbook is not so big so it's very easy to pick a topic and read everything in quotes <laughs> about that topic and then because it's ONG it's just down there you know it's not like anatomy where you are today you're in upper limbs tomorrow you're in lower limbs it's just everything is almost centered around just one system just one gender so it's quite easy and then a lot of those things are interrelated so i wouldn't say i had a special way of reading ong i simply enjoyed ong in that sense that ong in itself is special compared to other courses Yes. I would say no. I studied ONG the same way I studied any course, ONG, pediatrics, medicine, or surgery. Before each posting, I plan. Okay, I know the materials required of me, the recommended texts, the notes, all those things. I get everything ready. Then I make a plan. I always say um, proper planning prevents this poor performance. Yeah, so make a plan, stick with it, make realistic goals and try there are some times that you may not exactly achieve the goals or objectives that you said but it's important to keep trying always make realistic goals you know that sort of thing and stick with the plan as long as the plan is a good one stick with it i really didn't study ONG differently but i would say in comparison with other courses ONG is a lot more i found a lot more straightforward and a lot more practical and what i mean by that is when I when you see cases, when I saw cases during ward round during clinics, it was easier to understand the theory aspect from seeing the cases. So another thing that helped is after seeing cases, reading around those cases. So because of the fact that you now know how that case presents, the clinical presentation, reading it now becomes a lot more easy. So it becomes easier to read it 
because of the fact that you've um, seen the presentation of it. So I would say that's that's the that's the very peculiar thing about ONG. For instance, labor. When a patient presents with labor, seeing the various stages the patient goes through and going back to read it so it becomes easier to understand. And also another thing that helped was coming for calls, coming for um, those um, extra calls and stuff like that and also doing things for instance like doing labor observing what is done and all that so when you are now reading the fact that you've done these things you for instance use the pathograph during labor your labor call that kind of thing would help to understand when you're actually now reading pathograph so it's, it's a very practical course so knowing the practical aspect knowing how the presentation is and applying oneself during posting would help to also understand the theory side of it one thing that really helped was just solving past questions over and over again and um learning management of cases over and over again and it's much better when you actively participate in management of cases i remember during my call that uh, I helped in management of pre-eclampsia. So that, for example, I didn't even need to read management of pre-eclampsia again for me to be able to, I mean, produce the stuff. So that really helped. So applying yourself clinically, yeah, that helps a lot. So yeah, I would say that really helped me. And if I'm to give any advice, it's to apply yourself clinically. That's going to save you some time from reading you may not have to read it again because you've done it and it's just there i don't have any secret study hack however what i do tell people is that if you're going to study a thing especially for medical students the best thing you can do for yourself is to have a good mastery of the subject matter once and for all like if you are going to read especially before exams come so if you are going to read something, just read it and understand it once and for all. It doesn't mean you won't forget, but then once you understand the concept, even if you do forget, last minute revision, somebody saying it in your ears, you know, hearing something about it, it would be easier for you to easily recall the important points compared to when you, you know, I don't use the word cram, but you understand, not necessarily cram, but some people read some topics and they don't understand it and they just flip to the next thing. Personally, I like to understand what I'm reading part time. Usually, if I don't understand the topic, I won't move away from it. Is it that I sleep, wake up when my brain is a bit more refreshed, read it again, or I look for someone who understands it better, or I approach the lecturer? anything at all we must understand that topic you know, um, active recall and repetition active recall is like um let's say you read something the night before you let's see the following morning the following day you're probably in class or something listening to music and then just try and remember what you read you may not remember everything and that's the good part you know okay i don't remember this particular part then you go back to read it so active recall repetition usually goes together. Those two things, they, they are very helpful. There are certain things that I found that helped me. It's not a secret. It's not a secret study at all. It's an helpful tip. And for me, I, I tend to not read for long periods. I tend to read for short periods. And I find that if I read for long periods, I don't usually read well. So, but if I break it down into small chunks of maybe 30 minutes to one hour, and then I rest. It's easier for me to assimilate that when I say, oh, I'm going to read for seven hours today, I'm going to read for eight hours. It's easier for me to say, I'm going to read for 30 minutes, read for that 30 minutes, or read for that one hour, and then rest. Then read for seven hours, and then I'm like pressing my phone in between, doing something, playing game, doing something that I'm not supposed to be doing because I'm reading seven hours. So it's easier to break it into chunks. So that's a very important tip. Another tip would be practicing questions. I've said it before. Reading to, to gain knowledge is different from reading for exams. So if you are reading to gain knowledge, you might not really have to practice questions. You can read your textbooks 
and gain that knowledge. But if you are reading for exams, you have to practice questions. Because there are certain things that the examiner wants from you that might not be as emphasized in the textbook as it should. So it's when you practice past questions, you know, okay, these are the things that they want you to know. And then you focus a lot more on those things and then you know those things as opposed to just reading without practicing questions. So the importance of past questions cannot be overemphasized. Another thing would be study groups. It actually helps helps to have discussions. And one interesting thing about having discussions is when you have discussions, some areas that if you, you thought was clear to you, it becomes obvious that there was something that was actually not clear. It, it helps to fill the gaps in your knowledge. So having discussions to help it goes a long way. And then again, asking questions. When you're not clear with something, just ask questions. And help is always not too far away when you ask questions. So I think, by and large, these are the things that helped me, the tips I have to give. My head is buzzing. I have a lot of things that I've learned from this video that I'm going to apply. And I really want you guys to also apply it. If you are looking forward to writing your exam soon, even if it's not o and exam, if it's pediatrics, if it's any other exam, anatomy, physiology, any level you are, you can as well apply these tips to your exam and i really love if you guys can comment in the comment section if you want to see other videos like this if there's any course that you want me to make inquiries about if it's physiology pathology um, pharmacology or any other course just comment down below and let me know if you want to see more videos like this yes that's the end of this video guys i'll see you guys in my next one i love you guys as always bye guys